Coding Made Easy. Everybody, this is Peter, aka Coding Made Easy, coming to you guys with the next C Sharp Made Easy tutorial. And in this tutorial, we are going to be learning about multi-dimensional multi-dimensional arrays. But uh, multi-dimensional arrays uh, are single the uh, regular arrays. Sorry, guys. Regular arrays or single dimensional arrays are good and they're valuable, uh, but multi-dimensional arrays can open up a, a new dimension, no pun intended, but they can open up a new dimension uh, to how you work with arrays. And we'll see how we can do this in just a second. So uh, what we're gonna do is we wanna create, um, uh, we're gonna create a tile map, right? Now, essentially, whenever we create a single dimensional array, so whenever we create an array like this, I want you to think of uh, temp array. I want you to think of if I create, like just like in the last tutorial, if I make an array of 10, I want you to imagine that we're making a linear row of boxes, okay, of cut holes. Now with multi-dimensional arrays, we'll be able to make boxes like this so we'll be able to make a uh, sort of a cube of boxes like so and so we'll be able to access elements here 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 and you'll see how useful uh, how useful this is uh, by the end of this tutorial so what we're gonna do is we want to make a tile map now we're gonna only have two tiles in our tile map so our tiles are gonna consist of a char array and we're gonna call it uh, tiles, and we'll just set the first value to um, a star and or an X, and we'll change this to a star. And that's it. So we just made an array of chars, and I'm not sure if I talked about chars in an earlier tutorial. I hope I did. Uh, but chars are basically uh, just characters, and we define them using single quotes. If I have not talked about them in a previous tutorial, I'll expand on them in a future tutorial. Uh, but that's a, essentially what they are. And uh, so we have our chars there, our characters there. And so we want to display our characters in a map form. And so we're going to create a multi-dimensional array to do that. So how do we create a multi-dimensional array? Well, we specify, we specify the type, use the angle bracket, and then we put a comma. So this will say that we are creating a two-dimensional array. So I'm gonna call this map, and um, I'll just end it there. So essentially this is saying, hey, we want one element there and an element there. So we're making a two-dimensional array. If we made two comma two commas, that would mean that we're making a three-dimensional array. Four commas, four-dimensional array, five commas, four, whatever. We have super huge arrays, but we're probably not going to get that big. The most you'll be using is two-dimensional array and maybe three-dimensional. I doubt you'll have a need for four-dimensional arrays, but if you do, then by all means, use it. So anyways, we're gonna create a two-dimensional array and I'll, I'm gonna show you why it's uh, defined like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say our new array and we're gonna make our map uh, four by four, a four by four square map. So we're just gonna do four by four. So by doing this, right, we've essentially said, okay, we want to have four columns and four rows. Essentially, that's exactly what we did, four columns and four rows. Now, it's important to note that the first element represents the rows and the second element will represent the columns, okay? So if we were to change this to this, three and four, then essentially we'd have three rows and we'd have four columns. So we'll do three and four uh, just to make life a bit easier, okay? Now, as we, as we defined our variables like this, right, using the curly brackets, if we want to define our variables uh, in that same fashion using a multi-dimensional array, we'd do like so. We specify our first curly bracket, 
when we specify our values like so. So we say, I don't know, let's just use a value y, 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 oh, why, oh, why is he using the value y? And then we do the same thing like so. And we gotta end it with a semicolon. And y is equal to red. Oh, sorry, we have to have four columns instead of three, sorry. That was my fault. So we'll add fourth column. So as you can see, we have three rows and we have four columns. So let's say, you know what, let's switch up these letters a bit. Oh, sorry, it's only one character, sorry. So let's say that I wanted to access this character right here. Well, in order to do so, I would just have to say, so we're just gonna use this kind of console right line. I just have to say map. Now let's count the rows. Row zero, row one. Let's count the columns. Column zero, one, two. So we'd say one comma two. And so if we do control F5 and we run this, as you can see, it displays the value A. So as you can see, that's why we define the commas here, because the commas will say we have a row there and then our column there. And if we had a three-dimensional array, we'd have, I guess, a row, column, and or width, length, height, or whatever you will have you want to define it. But in this case, we're just going to have our row and columns for a map. So we're going to be using this uh, in an interesting way. So instead of defining chars in our map, what we're going to do is we're going to define, we're going to define them as integers. So we're going to have an integer multi-dimensional array. And um, we're still going to call it the map and we're still going to make it three by four. But in this case, instead of defining chars, we're going to define integers. So if we want to display the X in the map, we're going to define the number zero. If we want to define the star, we're going to define the number one. So now let's just uh, define the number one and we'll just do zero and we'll do one and I don't know, one, one, which is zero, zero, one. Okay, so we have our map defined like so, okay? So the zeros, whenever wherever we see a zero, we want to put an X there. And whenever we see a one, we want to put our asterisk there. So essentially, this is how we're going to go about it. So what we want to do is we want to lay it out like so. We want to print out this line, and we want to print out this line, then print out this line to get a nice, beautiful map. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna do it using two for loops. So first we, we want to have our X's and our Y's. So we have our rows and our columns. So first we'll, we'll have row and we'll set row zero and we'll say rows less than and we'll say map. Now, this is an interesting thing. What if we, how do we get the amount of rows versus the amount of columns inside a map? Well, if we try to use the length property, so let's just try to use length. And if we put a breakpoint there and we try to run it, and we look at the bottom of the screen, or if we look here, sorry, we'll see that map length shows 12, right? Well, we do have 12 elements, but we want to see how many rows we have. Well, to do it, we have to use what is called the, we have to use the get length method. So once we do get length, we have to get the amount in the first dimension. So one, two, three. And then when we want to get the columns, we have to do get, get length on the second dimension, which will be four. 
And so if we have a third dimension, then we could say get length dimension two to be for the third dimension. So we're gonna be looping through the rows and then we're going to be looping through the columns. So we're gonna say columns, let's say map get length one, column plus plus, okay? So we have our rows and we have our columns. So essentially what we wanna do is we want to say we're gonna say system console, right? Not right line, just right. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna write tiles row. Sorry, tiles map row column. So this might be a little confusing. So I'm gonna extract this from here to make it uh, uh, a little easier. So we're gonna say tile number. And then we're going to put the tile number inside the tiles like so. And outside this for loop, we're going to write the line. And actually, we don't even need to. We just got to put uh, the rewrite and then say environment new line. Okay, and so we're gonna run this first, and then I'm going to explain to you exactly everything that's going on. So as you can see, this is a really ugly map. You know what, maybe we could just use X's and O's. Sorry. Run this, control F5. So as you can see, everywhere we define the, define the one, we get O, and everywhere we define the zero, we get X. So as you can see, the X is there and we have our O's there. So let's explain what is going on. Let's walk through what's going on. And we'll use the power of breakpoints. And if you don't know what a breakpoint is, you can always watch my debugging ADC tutorial series. So what we're gonna what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we're setting row row equal to zero and column equal to zero. Okay. And so we're saying we want our tile number to be map row column. So what's the value of row? The value of row zero, the value of column is zero. What is that row zero? This is row zero, and what is that column zero? This, the value one. So the value one is going to be set to tile number. So then when we go to write, we go to tiles and we say tiles one. Okay, what is that value one? We have tiles zero and we have tiles one. So now we're gonna write the zero. And we're gonna write the zero there, or the O there. Then we're gonna come back to this for loop again. Column is gonna be increased by one, okay? So now, so I'll just, sorry, I kind of paused my screen recorder there by accident. Okay, can I check? So I can't really click F10 while I'm debugging. So we'll just click F5 to hit that break point again, we'll continue. So it went down here, it printed it, as you can see. We printed a circle and we went through the loop again. So now columns one, row is still zero, okay? So we have to say, okay, we're at row zero. What's that row zero column number one? We have the value zero, okay. So map row column is equal to zero. So our tile number will be equal to zero. So what is that tiles zero? Tile zero has a value X. And so we'll display X. And if I run this, as you can see, it will display the value X. And it will do so on and so forth until it displays everything. And then that will be the end of our application. So as you can see, it will display on map. So I hope this wasn't too confusing for you, but the point of a multi, the point I was trying to make in this tutorial is that using multi-dimensional arrays, we can uh, do a boatload of stuff. A lot of stuff that has to do with like 2D mapping or coordinates or anything like that. 2D arrays really help us uh, in that in a way that one dimensional arrays might not be of the most use. Can we do the same effect with one dimensional arrays? Of course we can, uh, but it, as you can see, it's much clearer and much better laid out in this situation. And if we didn't want to explicitly define our default values here, we could always simply define a value like this, zero, zero is equal to five, blah, blah, and so on and so forth. So we could still define our values like so. 
but I just thought that by showing you guys, by defining it like this, it's clearer and you can see exactly what is going on uh, when we create our arrays. So that is it for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed creating your first ever town map. Um, or maybe it's not your first, maybe you've done it before, but I hope you enjoyed creating a sample text-based town map. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment and subscribe, and bye for now.